Okay, we're on to the fun stuff in this video. In previous videos, you learned about my favorite decorating tool, the parchment pastry cone, how to make perfectly flat rolled cookies that are ideal for decorating. And we even talked about royal icing. But in this video, we're going to get down to decorating and actually using that icing. We'll be talking about top coating and outlining and flooding, which are two different techniques for getting very smooth, glassy top coats on cookies, like so. Let me tell you a little bit about the difference between the two techniques. Most decorators are familiar with outlining and flooding, which is the process of laying a thick, relatively thick icing border around the edge of the cookie to create a dam, and then flooding with a much looser icing to create this smooth, glassy top coat. Top coating is what I often do because it skips the step of outlining and it saves me time, and time is money, especially if you're running a professional kitchen. In that case, I skip the outlining and I simply apply icing, a little thicker consistency than flooding icing, to create the, smooth, the same smooth um, icing top coat. And you'll see that because I don't have the dam on the cookie, I've got a little extra edge, and that's great for laying borders into um, later on in the process. Before I show you how to do this, let me pause and, and recommend that you definitely don't skip on to some of the subsequent videos like stenciling and marbling and stamping. They might sound sexier, but it's really important that you have this technique down first because it is often the building block that all those other techniques lay on top of. So we want to make sure we know how to ice a cookie very, very smoothly because some of those other techniques won't work so well if we've got a, a lumpy top coat. Okay, I'm going to start first with top coating. That's the process of not applying a border and just putting the icing on top. Some of you may be less familiar with this technique, but again, I find it slightly faster. Now I've got my icing already mixed, and in the last video we talked about royal icing. I'm working with royal icing because it has quick drying properties due to the egg whites in it. And I've already colored it with a liquid gel food coloring, which is highly concentrated and keeps the icing at closer to the consistency I want it, even if I'm going for a really intense color. Now I'm looking for something at top coating consistency, and this is almost closer to outlining consistency. It's sort of blobbing, falling in blobs off the spoon, and I want it to be a little bit more fluid. Um, if you recall, my consistency adjustments for top coating were about one and a half to two and a half teaspoons of water to about a cup of my icing glue. And I just think I need a little bit more water here. I'm going to stir it in at this point rather than beating it in because I don't want to pump a lot of air bubbles into this icing. And I've got a relatively small cookie. It's probably two and a half inches here that I'm going to top coat, so I don't want this too flowy because we don't want it to run off the edges of the cookie. Now for top coating, I discovered by accident in my bakery that a craft paintbrush, this is just a craft paintbrush with the bristles broken off, um, tended to be a really great uh, device for laying the icing on the cookie. I use brushes for other purposes for dusting and painting cookies, but the handle end is is just really, really speedy in this case. So for top coating, I'll start by depositing maybe a teaspoon of icing in the center of the cookie. And then I simply dab it around. I'm using the, I'm not spreading it. I'm not using the side of the brush, but rather the top of it. I'm just dabbing it around till it comes about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'll continue in this vein. Um, as I mentioned, a couple of times now, royal icing dries very, very quickly, so it's looking very smooth and glass-like where, where I already iced it. So I don't want to go back over it and try to work out small imperfections, because in all likelihood, those areas will have probably already set up, and I'll just make it look worse. I am noticing some air bubbles in my icing, which I'm not really loving, but once I complete this cookie, we'll take my trussing needle, also called a turkey laser. You can use a toothpick too, and we'll pop those out. Okay, may have been a little heavy on the icing here. Hopefully it won't um, flow off the edge. And if your edge isn't perfect, like it's not here, um, I can also use my turkey laser to kind of spread it out and make it just a little more even. But most of that unevenness I'll conceal with a border. And I've got some big bubbles, so I'm gonna get these while the icing is wet, because if you wait too long, you'll leave a dent in the cookie. I've got a few of them, and I'm gonna push this edge out too so it's a little bit neater. And so that's fully top coated and it's fast because I didn't have to outline first. I skip a step, I skip a consistency of icing. I'm just going to set this down over here to dry before I would move on to other 
uh, decorative details on top. And we'll talk a little bit about drying time later. You don't want to move it too much or it can flow off the edge of the cookie. But let's turn now to top out, to rather outlining and flooding, which is another way of getting the same smooth top coat. And you'll see, why would I do that? Um, typically I like to do that when I like to get the icing very close to the edge on this cookie, when there's more risk of it flowing off without the border or dam. And as you can see on this cookie, I've got a nice boundary that was created with a thicker icing, and then I've flooded this looser icing into the interior. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. As a beginner, um, this requires two consistencies of icing, typically, as a beginner. I like to encourage beginners to work with a thicker icing for the dam because that will create a higher dam, it's less likely to spread, and then your looser icing is less likely to run off. Um, so for the, for the dam, for a beginner, because you can work with a looser icing once you get more accustomed to this, and I'll talk about that also in a bit, but for the dam, you want to work with something close to outlining consistency, which is a th relatively thick icing that falls in slow blobs off the spoon. And this is already pretty close to, to the right texture. So I'm just going to fill a parchment pastry cone with it to do the outlining. Again, my favorite decorating tool, I hold it by the notch as I'm adding the icing and only ever fill it about half to two thirds full. And since I'm not doing too many cookies right now, I might even fill it a little less full. Hold down both corners to prevent backflow and then roll down to create this grip and make sure the icing is all the way into the tip before you start. I also like to practice on my cutting board, cutting a hole straight across. I want a pretty big outline on this so I've got a nice ample dam. So I've cut maybe an eighth of an inch opening. I'm just making sure the icing is working on my work surface before I do it on the cookie. In a basic piping technique, again, touch down, but don't drag the tip. Just let the icing fall into place. And I'm trying to trace along the cookie edge. As you come around the cookie, you may have to rotate the cookie because my hand right now is beginning to get in my line of sight. So it's a little hard to see where the icing is flowing, but I'm doing OK. Coming around, coming around. And I go really slowly with the thicker icing because the faster you pipe, the more likely it is to break. So I just touch down at the end to break the icing. And I usually always have a damp paper towel near my workstation to wipe off the tip. So the next time I pipe the next line, I don't have this little trail of icing starting it. So I've got my dam there. And if this were a really dark color and I were laying a lighter color next to it, I might wait for that dam to dry until a skin or crust had formed on it because then the colors are less likely to bleed. But since I'm putting pink next to pink, I can ice almost immediately, Im immediately in fact. Now I can lay this, I can flood with my craft paint brush as I did before because this is a nice round shape. And oftentimes I'll do that because I find it faster. But you can also pump the icing through and into this area with a parchment pastry cone. Typically I only do this when I have small angular areas on the cookie to fill and I will do that. Um, very shortly. But for now, this is a nice rounded space. My brush is able to get into all the contours of this cookie, so I don't need to use my parchment cone. And it just saves me a step of having to fill a bag. Now, um, as I said earlier, you could use a looser icing for the outline. And what would happen in that case is that the outline would blend uh, more fully into the top coating icing so you wouldn't see that border at the end of the day. And I'll show you a cookie that I've already iced in which I used a looser icing. But you just have to be a little care more careful when you take that approach that you don't overfill the interior of the cookie because you, the um, outlining icing will spread and flatten and so you won't have as high a border as when you work with this, this very thick outlining icing. So basically again just dabbing, following the same procedure I used on the other cookie without the border. But you'll see that my icing is much closer to the edge in this case. And it's not going to roll off unless I tip the cookie. Pop in some air bubbles and voila. Beautiful. I'm going to set it over here to dry. Back on that point though about using a loose outlining consistency. This cookie actually, you, let me compare it to this one. This is one where I used a thick outlining icing and you can still see the distinction between the top coating icing and the, and the outlining icing. Here I used an icing that was very nearly the same consistency as my top coating icing and you can't see the outline whatsoever. And in some cases that might be a big deal to you but for most decorating um, applications and designs it, it, won't, it won't be so not noticeable.
So we just finished top coating a whole cookie. I'm going to turn to top coating a portion of a cookie, or rather outlining and flooding a smaller portion of the cookie. That requires more intricate piping, so I'm going to need to sit to do that task. So I'm just going to clean up here a little bit and get back to you. Okay, I'm back. I like to be close to my cookies when I'm decorating. It just gives me a little bit more control. So I'm nice and comfortable now. I'm going to show you um, how to outline and flood actually portions of cookies because this presents a slightly different challenge than top coating a whole cookie. Um, for example, I have previously did these. I've got a pattern that looks a little bit like flags or bunting. And I've simply used a dark brown icing of outlining consistency to create these triangles. And then I flooded with a much looser icing, white icing of top coating or flooding consistency. And you'll notice how the, these white spaces are nicely rounded. Typically, that's not always the case. Typically, if you don't do the trick that I'm about to show you, you will have this kind of crater, cratering effect. And this happens oftentimes in very small areas on cookies, about an inch to half an inch or smaller. So just I'll, I'll go ahead and pipe that, and then I'll show you how I prevent that cratering from occurring. I don't have a pink cookie, but I do have a tan one. And I'm going to move those cookies out of the way. Lay first my outlining icing. This is brown again, and I'm just testing it as I always do on my work surface first. I'm going to do two lines across the cookie, touching down to break the icing. If I need to, I'll wipe the tip, but it's pretty clean before I start the next line. And I'm piping relatively slowly again because the icing's thick. If I move too fast, I'm more likely to break the icing. And the next um, I'm just going to connect the ends here. My forefinger here is steadying the bag rather than squeezing icing out from that point. Now I'm adding the triangles. I'm trying to do this in one continuous motion. I'm doing a pretty good job of it. I missed a little area up at the front here, but I don't think that's going to matter much. So I've got my border laid. Typically, if I were doing this with no time pressure, I would allow the brown to dry till it had crusted, um, because again, you're less likely to get any bleeding of dark to light colors if you allow some dry time. And in this case, I am putting a very light color next to it, which is a white of flooding consistency. I've already got that loaded in my bag. Um, because I'm flooding a relatively bigger area, I want to cut a larger hole in the tip. Still, this is rather small because I want some control. I, I don't think it's much more than an eighth of an inch open. I don't know if you can see that. So if I cut it too big, the icing flows everywhere and I have no control. And so I'm just going to, in this case, you'll notice I am using a parchment cone to put the icing in. And that's because this is a really tight, confined space and I need to get the icing up into some, some pretty small corners. So my, my craft paintbrush handle just definitely wouldn't fit these areas. And in fact, the parchment cone doesn't fit the very smallest of areas. So I'll get my trussing needle again and just scooch the icing into the, the corners here. So I will often use a cone to flood when I'm working in more confined spaces. But otherwise, I'll skip it and just work with the craft paintbrush stick because it's a little bit faster. In this case, we're working in a pretty detailed mode. I'm just going to fill two of these triangles. You'll get the idea. And I'm scooching the icing into the corner. Now, when the icing's wet, it looks, looks nice and rounded on top and domed. But as I mentioned, if you were to do nothing with that and just let it sit and dry, chances are it would crater like that. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a divot in the center of each flag. And I don't really like the way that looks. And sometimes that can interfere with designs. So one way to avoid it is, is to actually quickly set the icing. Um, why it craters is because the icing actually doesn't set fast enough, and so it sort of sinks in the middle before the icing can fully set. The icing sort of weighs itself da down. But if you do a quick heat set with a heat gun or by sticking the cookie um, at a low temperature in the oven, maybe 150 degrees for a couple of minutes, um, you'll prevent that effect. So I'm just going to wave my heat gun. This is an embossing tool I got in the craft store over the cookie. And I'm about five to six inches away from it. This does get very hot. I've got it on the high mode. And I do this for a couple of minutes until the cookie is just um, dry to the touch. It actually gets a little bit glossier as you go through this process. And then, then I'm done. 
So I'm just a little bit shy of where I need to have it, but that's the process. Um, I will warn you, you can overheat a cookie, both with a heat gun and in the oven, and um, you'll have some problems with that too. So you want to wash the cookie carefully as you're doing this. Here's the effect of the cookie when I overheated it. The cookie actually, the icing actually expands and bursts. So I've got some cracks here. And if I went even further than that, it might even explode. So you would just want to do it enough till it sets um, without any cracking appearing on top. So that's outlining and flooding a small space on a cookie and you can do any which form you want. I just happened to show this flag type shape. I'm going to pause now. We're going to go to an even further extreme and I'm going to show you how outlining and flooding can be taken um, to even finer detail to create a needlepoint effect. I'm going to talk briefly about what is an Eastern European tradition of this needlepoint effect, which is nothing more than laying fine lines of outlining consistency into a grid and then filling the grid. And these grid openings are, oh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch thick with icing of flooding consistency. So I'm only going to do four rows here because each of these cookies took me a half an hour or an hour to complete. So this is somewhat advanced, but I just want to show you um, what's possible when you take these techniques to the limit. And for this technique, I not only need to sit down, but I need to wear my glasses to see what I'm doing. I've got my outlining icing in a parchment cone already, and as you can see, I've got it hardly open at all. I'm just going to open it up a touch because I want this to be very delicate. And that looks great. I'm going to lay four lines across rather than the 10 or 12 that I've got on that cookie, just to give you a sense of how it works. And again, I'm, I'm piping towards me. I find that, um, actually I'm going to turn this around so I, that my hand's not over the line I just piped and I can get an, a better idea of how closely spaced those lines are. I'm steadying the bag with the tip of my finger, not squeezing it there because that would constrict the flow of the icing. And I'm piping towards me, so I, I always have my line in plain view. And as your icing is thicker in consistency, you need to pipe more slowly or the line can break. I'm actually going to put six lines down because these are so close together. I'm not sure what pattern I'm going to put in here yet, but we shall see. So I start by laying the, the lines in one direction and now I'm going to rotate the cookie toward me. So they're, they're not perfect, but they're pretty darn close. And I'm going to lay uh, lines perpendicular to these to create a grid. Again, touching down on the top line. Whoops, I missed. Didn't make contact completely. Let's make sure that's flowing. And if you make a mistake, um, like that, where you have a little bit of extra icing. Again, this is where the trussing needle comes in handy. You can just take that right off. And I'm going to continue piping these lines all the way across. You can see how time consuming this could be if you were doing half of a large cookie. And I'm working pretty quickly here today because we're videotaping this. Okay, I'm getting close to the end here. I've got another couple lines that'll fit. One more to go, and then we'll start filling in the grid. The grid is especially delicate. Actually, royal icing when it dries is extremely delicate, regardless of how thick you pipe it. So when I'm applying the top coating icing into the interior of the grid, I want to be super careful that I don't touch what I've already piped, because I can break it. Um, so again, this is an advanced technique. I'm going to turn the cookie towards me now so I can see what I'm doing. And I think I'm just going to put a, a simple zigzag through this. Um, and I'm just putting a drop of icing. I hardly have this open yet again. It's not even a sixteenth of an inch, which gets back to the advantages of working with a parchment pastry cone. I can do extremely delicate work that's often hard to do, even with a number zero or a number one metal tip. So I'm just going to do a zigzag, so I'm filling dots on the di diagonal here. It's a pretty easy pattern to do as a beginner. I'm just filling enough so it fills the hole amply. 
Now, because these spaces are so small, the weight of the icing in there isn't terrific um, I'm, as compared to that flag cookie that I just did. So even if I weren't to put a heat gun to this, there wouldn't be any kind of crevicing effect on spaces this small. The crevicing typically occurs with spaces that begin to approach the quarter inch mark up to about a half an inch. And I'm taking care to kind of not touch the grid, but rather sort of locate my tip right over the area I want to fill and just pump the icing out until it fills it because I don't want to touch the grid and actually break it. So there's a simple zigzag. And to finish this cookie out, I would do, I'd outline as I did here with a thick icing and probably add some dots, which again work beautifully with this top coating icing. So that's it for taking outlining and flooding to the extreme. In the next video, we'll talk about dipping, which is an alternative way to top coat a cookie when you don't want to see any of the cookie edge. Until then, live sweetly.